friends, welcome to the Acne Reptile Girl with me, Annalise. Today I will be introducing you to one of my absolute favorite species of snakes. I first met this species at a summer camp where I got to hang out with one of these guys every day. I knew that this snake would be on my one day gotta have one list. They're not terribly common, so I thought it would be a long way off before I got one. But as luck would have it, we found this girl when we were looking into adopting a different snake altogether. I've mentioned this species a few times in past videos, and you may have even caught her in one of my recent videos about how snakes think. She is a heavy bodied snake from Madagascar. She has these amazing cryptic camouflage markings on her sides, and her species is known for its immense strength, but very gentle nature. Let's meet Desara. Here she is. This is Tassara, my beautiful Dumeril's ground boa. She's about four years old and a little bit under six feet. She's a hefty snake and really strong, and we'll talk about that in a minute. At this size, you may think that she's a bit of a handful to handle, and she's not at all. In fact, this is the laziest snake we have. As long as she finds a relatively comfy spot on or around or beside me on the couch, she doesn't move at all for hours. In fact, they are so good at being lazy that their Latin name, Acrantophus dumerali, literally means lazy snake. Acrant meaning lazy or useless, and Ophis meaning snake, and then Dumerali is after the French herpetologist who discovered them in 1860, Andre Marie Constant Dumerel. Dumerels can live about 15 to 20 years old. They are very slow growing and not getting to adult size until they are at least five years of age. So with Tessara being four years old, she has a little bit more growing to do, and I'm hoping for at least one more foot out of her. Males are typically much smaller than the females, who max out at seven feet. But there have been reports of female dumerals hitting close to nine feet long, and that would be an amazing snake. Dumerals are native to Madagascar, off the east coast of Africa. They are one of two boa species on the island, the other being the Madagascar ground boa. Unlike the Madagascar ground boa, who preferred the more humid rainforests, dumerals like to make their home in the drier scrub forests on the southwest end of the island. In the wild, these guys will lie motionless, using their beautiful camouflage to disappear into the leaf litter. And they will lie like this for days or even weeks, waiting for prey to come by. Then, in an instant, they use their powerful coils and strike. Their diet in the wild would include a variety of prey animals, from rodents to birds, lizards to snakes, and even distant relatives of ours, lemurs. They will readily feed on chickens, and this can put them at odds with the farmers of Madagascar, which will sometimes see these beautiful creatures as a nuisance or even sadly a threat to their livelihood and end up killing them. Here with us, Tassara happily devours frozen thawed jumbo rats. Because of their sedentary nature, she only eats once every three weeks or so. We were warned by her previous owners that she has a slight habit of occasionally over squeezing and um, popping her meal and making a huge mess. Thankfully, we have not run into any of that yet. And so far, she seems like a pretty gentle eater. Which is good, because she is strong. Freakishly strong for an animal that doesn't even weigh 10 pounds. I'll give you an example. If she decides she wants more room when she is sharing an armchair with my dad, who weighs over 200 pounds, she can easily push him aside with a shoulder shrug of one of her coils. Boat constrictors, like... Tituba, our boa constrictor imperator, are known for their immense strength. 
and a Dumeril boa of the same size is significantly stronger. Compared to a python, Dumeril's boas absolutely blow them away in terms of constricting strength. It used to be thought that snakes asphyxiated their prey, which is to stop them from breathing. But what they really do is they squeeze so hard that it stops their heart because the heart cannot overcome the pressure of the squeezing. Unconsciousness occurs within seconds and death a very short time later. So how strong are they really? Well, a Burmese or reticulated python, which grow much longer and thicker than dumerals, can squeeze at about the force of eight pounds per square inch. Eight pounds may not sound like a lot, but let me put that in perspective. This little post-it is about nine square inches. So at eight pounds per square inch, that's 72 pounds forced onto this tiny little square. That wrapped around would be more than enough pressure to stop the heart of any animal small enough for them to eat. Here is how the Dimmerals boa compare. At this size, she can squeeze with a max force of 25 PSI. That is three times what a significantly larger berm or retic could do. That is 225 pounds on this small little post-it. That is an absolute incredible amount of strength. While she is immensely strong, I do want to assure you all, especially my grandparents, that I am in no danger of Tassara hurting me at all. This type of strength comes from tightening up multiple loops of coils and tightening them on a small prey item. So for all the concerned folks out there, let me break it down. A, there's just not enough of her to get around me enough times to provide the leverage and torque that she needs to put that much pressure on me. B, she knows she can't eat me, so she would never even try to do that because it is a huge waste of energy. And remember, lazy snake. And C, like I said earlier, it's the coils and the space in the middle of them that gets the pressure. So even her squeezing with all of her might, I can still easily unwind her from either end. Now, as safe as I am, accidents can happen, which is why I take precautions, and you should too with a snake that is this strong. Things like, I never handle her alone. One of my parents is always in the room when she's out. I don't let her wrap all the way around my neck. Around my shoulders is okay, but I still have a hand on her tail end and my other one controlling her head. And even though she would make an amazing pillow, none of us would nap with her the way we would with Monty. Her strength is impressive, but here's something really cool. Pound for pound, Tassara is not the strongest snake I have by a long shot. Just off camera is a true monster in terms of constricting strength. Wanna see him? Of course you do. This is Johan. He is our reverse striped California king snake. Now, he may not look anywhere as impressive as Tassara, but pound for pound, he absolutely obliterates her in terms of constricting strength. We'll be getting a video all of his own soon, so I won't go too much into king snakes. But basically, they, well, they eat other snakes. Usually ones that are the same size they are. And since we just talked about how strong snakes are, that means that snake eating snakes have to be much stronger. For their size, king snakes are the strongest constrictors on the planet. Now, they only get three to four feet long, and they're much more slender than big boas or pythons. But if Hypothetically, you were to scale him up to Tassara's thickness, he could generate 50 pounds per square inch. Yeah, remember that little post-it? That would be about 450 pounds on this little square. I can't even imagine the sheer force that would be. Thankfully though, Johan will remain small and completely harmless, except to his prey. Anyway, back to the star of this video. 
We kept Asara in quarantine in a 40 gallon tank for about six weeks. It was big enough for her while we monitored her health, but not suitable for a long-term setup. While she does spend most of her time curled up taking up about this much room, she does need to stretch out occasionally. And she needs big hides, a big water dish, and lots of substrate because they like to burrow. So we needed a bigger enclosure for her. And this was our solution. This is the wooden enclosure that we bought. It was split into three segments, so we've portioned off one to make a second enclosure that we'll probably use for Tatubo when she outgrows her current enclosure. Tassara's section is about five feet long, just over three feet deep, and three feet tall. Plenty of room for her at this size. We've got a sunken in hide here on the hot side that she spends most of her time in, but there is also this big cork log on the cool side. We were told she likes to soak, so we got a big water dish for her. So far, she's only gone in there once, when Oscar startled her by peeking in through the window. She ran into the bowl and hid under the water and blew bubbles for about 20 minutes. She's a little bit weird. One of the things she liked to do in her quarantine tank was throw her water dish around. Literally throw it with her tail from one end of her tank to the other and back every day. Because this is not a bioactive enclosure with a drainage layer, we didn't want that to happen with this giant bowl. So we've positioned it underneath this shelf so that she can't flip it over. So far, she hasn't even tried. And I think that means that she's happy? As you can see, we've also got some other bits of branches and foliage for enrichment. And so far, I think she likes it. The temperature requirements for her cool side should be 24 to 27 degrees Celsius and 27 to 29 degrees on the hot side with a basking spot of 32 to 35 degrees. The heat lamps and lights are on a thermostat and a timer to give her a proper day and night cycle. Because they are from a more arid environment, they don't need as much humidity, so 40 to 60 percent is optimal. They are surprisingly easy to care for, and it doesn't take much to make them happy. Unless, of course, you're filming with them. The only real downside I found with her is her pooping. Most of my other snakes have a pretty regular cycle. They eat once a week, and they poop and or urate once a week. And the poops are manageable size. Easy. Tassara urates once every couple days, and usually in her hide that she's in all the time. Unless, of course, she decides to do it on my back or on the table during filming. Just wait till the bloopers. Since she doesn't in her hide often, this usually means that I have to wash her off before I handle her. But that's actually not the big deal. The problem is the actual poop itself. It's, well, um, certainly impressive and uh, breathtaking and practically worthy of its own shovel. Thankfully though, she only does that once a month, but when she does, oh, is that ever a day changer. That is one big pile. Before we go, let's talk about her name, Tessara. When I first met her, my first thought was what a beautiful girl. I decided that's what I wanted to name her. According to my Google machine, in Malagasy, Madagascar's native language, beautiful girl translates to Tovavavi Tsara. That was a bit of a mouthful, so I started to break down the translation. Tovavavi means girl, and that's as far as I got. I assumed without checking that Tsara meant beautiful. Process of elimination, right? Perfect. Her name is beautiful. I loved it. And it fit her personality. And of course, it went along with the tea theme we started with our other boa, Tatuba, our BCI. Done! Yeah, not so much. 
My dad came along and, as usual, ruined my fun with his facts and knowledge. He pointed out that translating languages back and forth isn't always as simple as it seems. And sometimes the meaning of one word is influenced by the other. We did some more digging and found out that beautiful on its own translates to Tisara Tahari, which literally translates to well done face. Well done face, which I think is awesome. I'm not beautiful, my face has just done a great job today. <laughs> I love it. If Tisara's name doesn't actually mean beautiful, on its own it means well done or good. So I guess the beautiful part will need to be implied, but I still think it fits her perfectly. Don't you? I am so happy to be able to share Tassara with you guys, and I hope that you enjoyed learning a bit about Doom Rolls Boas, because they're just wonderful snakes. They may not be as curious and active as other pet snakes, but they are just gorgeous to look at and great for sharing an armchair or couch with. They are impressive in size and strength for those who like a chunkier snake, but that's still very gentle. Really, if it wasn't for their size and, by extension, the big stuff that they need or poop out, <laughs> they could easily rival corn snakes and ball pythons as the ideal first pet snake. But at this size, I think that there's still just a little too much snake for brand new ophidiophiles. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching me, the all Canadian Reptile Girl, and Tassar, and of course, the guest stars, Johan and Tatuba. Please don't forget to check out my other videos, and as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and remember, nurture all nature. See you next time, bye. You're just going everywhere, aren't you, darling? Flop. Stay. Hi. Can you give me kisses? There you are. Very pretty little nose. I'm just gonna have a little nap here. <laughs> In the wild, these guys will lie. <laughs> I thought that was you making a noise to just... Ugh. This is gross. I think she's gonna do another spit. Are you, are, are you good? Sarah, are you, you... You done? Oh, don't put your tail down in it. Okay, can you come here and grab her head, please? Looks like we cracked an egg on the table.